we continue to work on the plate electrode. It will now be covered with synthetic black felt. The felt has two functions. First, it creates a contrast to the tracks of ionizing radiation. Second, it soaks up the isopropanol that we will use to create a supersaturated vapor in the chamber. Again, I use the same two component epoxy resin. The two fastening holes can be punched out by heating a screw of the appropriate diameter. An M6, 50mm stainless steel screw is used to secure the plate electrode. The head of the screw is coated with a burnishing agent. Black paint is less suitable, as the isopropanol attacks it. Since it is stainless steel, we have to help it along with some heat to start the reaction. After curing, the excess felt is removed with a scalpel. I then attached the M5 stainless steel screw to the plate electrode. The nut was again secured with a thread locker. In the meantime, off camera I made this bracket from 10mm thick PVC sheet. The bracket is used to hold two 4mm banana jacks. Now the bracket needs to be glued in place. As before, two component epoxy resin is used. During curing, the bracket is best held in place with screw clamps. Now the plate electrode can be screwed to the lower flange. To adjust the height of the plate electrode, we assemble the cloud chamber. The laser line should pass through the center of the americium position. After the height of the plate electrode is set, the two nuts are sealed with the same epoxy resin that we have already used several times. A wire about 20 cm long is soldered to a solder tag with a 6 mm hole. I use 22 gauge silicon coated tinned wire for the complete wiring of the cloud chamber. The solder tag is then connected to the plate electrode. Off camera, I also wired the connecting wires of the line laser and the ring electrode to the banana jacks. I also made a holder for the suction tube from 10mm PVC sheet and drilled the according holes into the base plate.
For the high voltage and laser power supply I have designed a custom PCB. And this is how the PCB looks populated. The circuit works as follows, a 555 timer IC generates a square wave signal which is used to drive a MOSFET. The MOSFET pulls the secondary winding of a small reversed mains transformer to the ground. This induces an AC voltage of about 200 volts in the primary winding. Via a half-wave series voltage multiplier, also called the Velar Cascade, the AC voltage is rectified and converted to about 1000 volts. The two low drop voltage regulators provide the appropriate operating voltages for the high voltage generation and for the laser. The PCB is mounted on the base plate using 4 M3 by 25 mm stainless steel screws and 5 mm spacers. All holes have been countersunk on the bottom side of the base plate. Next, the connecting cables are made, leading from the PCB to the banana jacks on the upper part of the cloud chamber. To grease the o-ring, I use silicone lubricant. The o-ring is also made of silicone and has an outer diameter of 102 mm and an inner diameter of 90 mm. Finally, we attach four self-adhesive silicon bumpers on the bottom side of the base plate. The cloud chamber is now ready to use. I use a 100 milliliter disposable syringe to create the adiabatic expansion. This is done by simply pulling out the syringe plunger in rapid motion. A 12 volt DC wall wart serves as the power supply for the cloud chamber. The felt is moistened with isopropanol using a pipette. Then the flange is screwed into place. The M6 nuts do not need to be particularly tight. After a few minutes, the high voltage power supply is switched on. During expansion, the tracks of the alpha radiation are clearly seen. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. See you next time.